Hello! I am so excited to hop on here and share with you guys a fun little tutorial video. This is Larissa with October Avenue Crafts and I am working with Paper Tray Ink with their Stitched Dyes uh, community and I have uh, created a little tutorial for you guys to share with you how I made these cute little stitched cupcakes and uh, put them on these adorable tags. So uh, just a disclaimer, I did receive these dies and materials for free as part of the design team, and um, I will link everything in the description box below in case you're interested in checking any of it out. Um, pretty much everything you see here is from Paper Tray Ink, if possible, and I believe right now, as of the day that I'm filming this video, everything is in stock, so hopefully it will remain that way uh, by the time I get this posted. So let's take a look, shall we? Um, so I created these fun little birthday tags. I think they turned out so stinking cute. Um, I wanted to share that you can use these stitching dies for flat paper crafts. You don't have to stuff them. You don't have to turn them into ornaments. You can use them for all kinds of projects. And so one of those projects that I'm going to share today is this little birthday tag and um, it's just a cute little tag that you can add onto a package and it's blank on the back so you can add your sentiment or little message. You could even stamp something cute on the back there and they're just so adorable. Let me get that to focus for you. There we go. So cute. So I've got them in different colors here and I'm going to share with you first how I stitch the cupcake and then I'll share with you guys how I put it all together. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to die cut your uh, cupcake out of some paper and felt. Okay, so I'm using the um, stitched cupcake die from Paper Tray Ink. And this die is currently on sale at the time that I'm filming this. And I believe it's $9, which is so affordable. Like, this is a must-have for your stash. Okay, um, and it comes with lots of pieces in here. The two pieces that I used for this project are the outline die, which looks like this, okay? And then the actual um, frosting part that goes on the top, like this. And then just so you know, there are also, uh, there's also this die and this one, and this one is to add sprinkles onto your cupcake. So if you wanted to stitch little sequins or seed beads on there, you could. I decided not to do that for this project. I just wanted to keep it simple. Um, and then this one is if you're gonna stitch this on, like let's say you're making a tote bag and you wanna stitch the cupcake onto the tote bag. You could die cut this on the tote bag and then it would show you where to line up the stitch marks so that it's attached to the bag you know, straight and properly and all that good stuff. Um, but I did not use those two for this project. I'm just using these two dies um, for this particular one, okay? So what I did was I took a piece of white cardstock and I just cut the uh, like sort of background base layer. And um, you can see some of the little holes are still, you know, the little, um, yeah, the little holes are still uh, sort of attached to the card, they are punched through. They're just sort of hanging in there. And when we start stitching, they will come out. So not to worry. And then uh, same thing with the felt. I cut out a piece of felt. This is going to be my base layer. Whatever color you cut out of this is what the bottom of your cupcake is going to be. So my bottom of my cupcake is going to be hot pink. And then this is the top part, the frosting part of the cupcake. And um, that is what I've cut out. Now, if you have any trouble die cutting felt in your die cut machine, you shouldn't have any problems, but if you do, a really good tip or trick is to um, lay the die on top of your felt, okay, that you're gonna cut out, right? Lay it on top of there. And then put a piece of cardstock on the back. Just cheap cardstock that you have in your stash that you don't care about. Put it on the back, run it through the die cut machine, throw that piece of cardstock away, and then you will see that it cuts your felt beautifully, okay? So if you have any trouble with it cutting felt for some reason, do that. It will take care of the problem. Now, um, the colors that I am using today, I am using uh, Paper Tray Ink Felt. This uh, hot pink color here is called Raspberry Fizz, and it is a very bright sort of fuchsia color. And then I am using Harvest Gold for the yellow, and that's gonna be my frosting. And so those are the two uh, colors of felt. 
I've said in a previous video, Paper Tray Ink Felt is like top-notch, high-quality, really good felt. You're going to love it. Okay, so I've die-cut my pieces. So I've got a white cardstock piece here, my base layer, and then my frosting. So now we're ready to start lining it up and stitching. Okay, so I've picked out a couple of colors of embroidery th floss that are pretty similar. They're not exact, but that's fine. They don't have to be the exact color. Um, you're going to use embroidery floss to do your stitching, um, and you, you know, can get this uh, pretty much anywhere. They did have it on Paper Tray Ink, but they are not currently selling it at the moment. So um, get some embroidery floss. Um, also pick colors. I like to pick colors that are very similar in color. Again, doesn't have to be the exact shade, but just close, you know, something. Um, it, you know, when you do it, it will kind of turn out like this. Now, I have seen people do it in contrasting colors, and it's really cute. I just always stick to the actual, like, tone on tone, because it's what I'm used to. Okay, and then you're going to need a needle. And I like to pick um, just any kind of sewing needle, hand stitching needle. But it's got to have a decent sized um, place to thread the... Th um, embroidery thread through because it is going to be kind of bulky so make sure you don't get one that's too small um, but just a, a needle and then you probably want like a pin cushion to set over to the side um, so that you can stick the pin in there and you don't lose it when you are not using it okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I am probably going to stitch on the yellow first so let's start with that so I'm going to pull out some of this yellow embroidery floss now there's no tip or trick that I know of as to how much you will need. So I probably, you know, end up pulling out too much, but I just kind of get, you know, a decent amount going there. Um, you, if you run out while you're stitching, you can, you know, sort of fix it and make it so that you can't tell and, you know, pick it back up, but it's kind of a pain. So it is easier, you know, if you have plenty, so don't shortchange yourself. Um, and so what I'm going to do is just take this floss and I'm going to thread it through the top of my needle. Okay. And, you know, uh, once you get it in there, if, again, if you get a needle that has sort of an eye, eye area that's big enough, it won't be hard to thread the floss through there. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start lining up my pieces. So I'm going to use the paper on the back. The reason I'm using paper is because I'm creating a flat 3D embellishment for a paper crafting project. I'm going to take this piece of paper and glue it onto another piece of paper when I'm finished. So it also gives it um, the project a little sturdiness. So I like to use a thick cardstock. Paper tray ink cardstock is super thick, um, really high quality, you know, good stuff. So I'm going to line this up with my paper and then I'm going to take my little uh, frosting piece and I'm going to line that up on top of there okay and what you're wanting to do is to line the holes up you know all the way through so all three layers you want the holes to line up perfectly and this does take a little eyeballing you know to get it pretty good and lined up um, and so what you want to do is sort of just pick um, you know one of these holes and make sure that it goes all the way through right so I'm checking to make sure that I've got the hole lined up all the way. And I do up there at the top, so I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna start from the back and I'm going to thread it through all three holes and I'm gonna hold everything together with this hand, with my left hand. Okay, and there we go. So now I've got all three of those pieces there and I'm gonna pull this through, but I'm not gonna pull it through all the way, okay? I wanna leave a little bit of a tail back here in the back Okay, uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this down with just some scotch tape. Nothing fancy. Um, it doesn't need to be fancy. Again, we're going to glue this down to a project. I just want something that's going to hold it in place. I could tie a knot, but if I do, it's going to add bulk to my project. And I don't want bulk on my project because, again, I'm going to glue it down. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're creating a plush ornament and you create a knot on the back, it's no big deal because you're going to stuff it with polyfill. But if you're going to glue something down to paper, um, then you, you know, want it to be flat. Also, this clear tape is easy to poke a needle through. So if I tape it over some holes, it's not going to be in my way. I can still sort of stitch through the clear tape, right? So I've put a piece of scotch tape there to hold it down and now I'm ready to go and I'm ready to start stitching. Okay. 
and we're just going to do a very simple stitch here. I'm no stitching expert. I promise you, I have been doing this for a while, but I don't have any special stitching skills or anything. Um, and so I am just threading this through the holes. And you can see, even though the holes didn't punch out all the way, you can still very clearly see where they are, okay? And the whole point is to keep it lined up so that the holes match uh, no matter what, right? Okay, so then what I'm gonna do, once I've made that first little stitch, I'm gonna come from the back because that's where my thread is right now. And if I don't know where the hole is, I can just flip it over and look, okay? And again, I wanna make sure I get it through all three of those holes, you know, lined up correctly. If I need to peel back the layers to make sure that I'm not missing anything, I can. Once you get going, after you've done a couple stitches, it's gonna naturally line up all on its own. So it's really just the first couple that you kinda of have to really keep a close eye, okay? Now, what I want to do is instead of going backwards and filling this in, um, that's going to make my stitching kind of messy on the back. Instead, I'm going to just stitch like this. Okay, so I'm going to come down and poke through my hole like this. Okay, now you're going to say, well, you, you skipped this part. That's okay. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. Okay, we're getting, we're going to come back to there. So I'm going through, I'm going to come back up through this hole right here. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Okay, so that it's gonna look like this basically. Okay, and you'll see some of these little hole, these little punched out holes, they get kinda there. You can just kinda pick them out with your needle. Okay, and we're just gonna keep doing that all the way around the yellow. Okay, just like that all the way around so that it looks like that and it'll go all the way around the yellow, okay? So I'm gonna skip ahead uh, so that you don't have to watch me stitch this whole thing. Okay, so I've skipped ahead a little bit. That only took me a couple of minutes, but you know, no reason to sit and watch it. Um, okay, so now we're getting close to uh, back being up here at the top, so I'm just gonna continue my stitches. This is what it looks like on the back. Um, I'm just going to continue stitching just the way I've been doing all the way up here until I'm back here at the very top. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, this is going to work out perfectly just because of the way the stitching is, but now I'm going to go back in and fill in all of these holes all the way around. Okay. So again, it's just going to work out where I'm going to stitch now this way. If it didn't work out perfectly, and you'll know what I mean when you come to a project where it doesn't work out perfectly, you just go back the other way you went, you started, right? Um, and so if you ever run into that situation, just go backwards, okay? Uh, that's not going to make a lot of sense right now, but if you ever start do a project where it doesn't just work out perfectly, then just go backwards and it'll make sense then. Okay, so I'm just going to continue stitching and I am just filling in the holes the blank spots so that you can see now it's like one continuous stitched piece. Okay, and again, I'm gonna go all the way around. Um, and once you do this a lot, you know, after you make two or three projects, you're gonna be a pro at this and it's gonna go so quickly and you're just gonna, you know, get these out uh, produced very quickly. Uh, I love to do stitching projects while I watch TV. Um, if you have kids in sports, this is a great project to take with you to do in the stands because it's very um, small and compact project. You don't need a lot of concentration. It's sort of like, um, you know, thoughtless work and, um, <clears throat> you know, what the actual stitching part anyway. And, um, you know, you can get a lot done while you're doing other things at the same time. Um, so I really like stitching projects for that reason. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way back around so that I've got all of the yellow stitched. Okay, so I've gone around and I'm almost back to where I started originally, and I'm just going to finish this out, stitching all the way around until I close the circle. Okay, 
All right, now that's the last stitch. So I'm going to, everything's stitched on here. It's already looking cute. And so the back, I'm just gonna do the exact same thing that I did with this first one. I'm just gonna get a piece of scotch tape and I am going to hold this down very taut and I'm going to tape over it, okay? It's not gonna be pretty on the back when we get done and that's okay because we're gonna glue it down to a project anyway. If you wanted to give gift these as embellishments, you could cut out another piece of white um, cardstock and just glue it on the top of this uh, when you're done if you wanted a more finished look on the back. I'm gonna glue it to a tag. Nobody's gonna take it off so it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we've got our frosting finished. So now I'm gonna start stitching this bottom part. Okay, so now I need to get a different color thread. So I'm gonna use the pink. And you can see I had tons of this left over, but sometimes it's better to have more than, or too much than too little. Um, and so I'm just gonna cut off some of this pink embroidery floss and I'm going to thread my needle and then we'll be ready to start stitching the bottom of our cupcake. And so the exact same thing, I'm gonna pick a spot to start. It doesn't really matter where, you can start at the top or the bottom. Um, I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna find my little dot, my little circle here and poke it through and make sure I get through the felt circle and the white one on the back. And then again, I'm gonna pull it through so that I'm leaving a little bit of a tail and I'm gonna tape it down and again, you can stitch right through this tape, so it's not a big deal. If I wanna stitch it down here, it's not gonna bother me. I'm gonna stitch it up here, or tape it up here because um, there's just space up there. But see how there's tape on top of these holes? It's fine, we're gonna just poke the needle right through it. It's not gonna matter. So now I'm going to, again, just do the very similar thing that I was doing up here, and I'm gonna start stitching these lines. And these are the lines of the cupcake uh, wrapper. And I'm gonna just do the exact same type of stitch. Now there are lots of different kinds of stitches that you can do. Um, there's a bunch of fancy stitches out there. There's like a cute little blanket stitch and all kinds of things. Um, and you can certainly do those, but I will tell you just the simple stitch works out just as well. <laughs> you know, you, you can do those things once you become more confident in your stitching, but you know, even if all you ever do is this very simple stitch, your projects are still going to be absolutely adorable. Um, okay. So I've just done that all the way down at the bottom and now I'm going to go back up. So here I'm just going to go backwards and put my needle through the top there. Okay. And again, same thing. Okay. And then let's see here, just like that. Okay. And so we're back at the top and we've done one line of our cupcake. And so now I need to go over and do the next line. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to poke it in the top hole up here of this cupcake liner. And then we're going to start all the way down again, just like we did before. Sort of going up and down the lines, just like this. My thread is probably a little too long for this project. And uh, then we're going to put that one down there. Okay. And again, now we're going to go back up, right? So we're going to go just like so. And then we're going to go all the way up. And then each line, we're going to just continue this. Okay, so I've stitched all the lines and I'm just finishing up this very last side here. So I'm just gonna finish my stitches. Make sure I get that lined up. And I'm gonna stitch it. Now you'll notice we did not glue the felt to the paper. I don't think that's necessary because you're stitching it on there. Uh, it's not going anywhere, <laughs> I can promise you. Um, once we finish all of the stitches, um, then we are just going to glue, or I'm sorry, not glue, tape our little uh, tail down, right? So just like we did before, we're just gonna set it down there. We're gonna get a little piece of tape and we're gonna tape it down. Okay, 
and then uh, snip it off. Okay, so there is our finished cupcake, and look how cute. Already so adorable. If you have any of those little sort of balls that come up, you can just kind of run your finger over it, and it will take those off. And if you have something that's really stubborn, you can get your little needle and kind of uh, get it off of there. But look how cute that is already. Okay, so what I want is a little cherry on top of my cupcake, so I'm going to use a little button to add, and I am going to add one of these... Um, Paper tray ink buttons. This is the Hibiscus Burst Pack. And you get, look at all these buttons you get in here, a ton. And so I'm going to pick out just a little button that I think will work for the size of my cupcake. And I'm thinking this one looks good. And so I'm just going to stitch my uh, button onto my project. So again, just like we did before. Now this one's not going to have any stitching guidelines, right? So we're going to actually just sort of poke through wherever we think through the paper um, to the front. And then I'm going to, again, tape my little tail down. Okay, we're going to have a lot of tape on the back of this thing, but it's not going to make any difference at all, I promise you. Okay, so then uh, now I've got my thread here, and I'm just going to thread my button through, and I'm going to, you know, just stitch it onto my little project. You can just kind of push it through there. And uh, I'm just going to put a little X, basically. Now, the problem is lining up. So I don't have any guiding holes here on the back, right? So I don't know where to put my, um, my hole. So what I'm going to do is on the front, I'm just going to push this halfway. And that's going to punch a hole. And then the same down here. Don't go all the way through, though. And so now when I come over to the back, now I know where to put my needle. Because there's a hole there, right? I've made a hole, a guiding hole. So now I know where my needle needs to go in order to pull it through. Okay, and now I have my little cherry on top of my um, cupcake. Now if you wanted to add sprinkles, you could totally use that guiding die that comes in there and you just cut that felt before you start stitching it and then that way you would know where the sprinkles go. Um, you could also just sort of, you know, put them wherever the heck you want. You could glue them on there. You do not have to stitch those on there. Um, you know, you could do a lot of different things. I'm keeping my cupcake pretty simple for my project. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, tape down my other little tail of my thread here. There we go. And then I will be good to go. Okay. And so uh, now my little cupcake is ready to create a tag. Okay. And so all I would do then is just glue this, hot glue this down to whatever project I'm using. You could probably use um, like a really strong sticky tape as well. Um, but I probably will use hot glue because that way it will have a very strong um, adhesion to the tag. Right. So this is the finished tag. And then this is the cupcake that we just made. So, so cute. So um, let me walk you through what I used for these tags. So in case you want to create something similar, uh, this part's pretty straightforward. So um, I use this die right here, which is the Paper Tray Ink Tag Cell Quilted Tag. And um, it comes with uh, this uh, big, huge tag here and then this little banner strip. And what I did is I just cut out some pattern paper and then layered some white paper behind it and then cut out my strip there. And then I stamped my sentiment and the sentiments that I used are the Just Sentiments Everyday stamp set. If you don't have this in your stash, I highly recommend it. It's a very inexpensive set and it comes with all of these sentiments for various um, occasions, I guess you should say. Um, so this is a great everyday stamp set. Um, and so I just stamped that there. And then I used the ribbon on top. So the ribbons I used up there at the top of the uh, tag was um, this one. This is the um, Harvest Gold Saddle Stitch Ribbon. And they have uh, also check out their ribbon because very inexpensive, cost effective and super cute. Uh, I use the Hibiscus Burst Extra Fine Polka Dot Satin Ribbon and then the Hawaiian Shores Extra Fine Polka Dot Ribbon Satin as well.
And so that's what I use to create my bows up here. And then these little yellow buttons, well, actually they're orange buttons. These are the summer sunrise buttons here. So stinking cute. And then this cotton uh, thread up here is also from Paper Tray Ink. So um, I am going to stop the video there because it's already super duper long. Um, if you would like me to do a tutorial on how I actually created the tags, leave me a comment uh, down below and I'll be happy to do that for anyone who does want to see that. But it is pretty self-explanatory and, um, you know, I don't want to make this video too, too long. So hopefully that was helpful um, tutorial on how to stitch your own little cupcake. These, this little cupcake die is so cute and an absolute must have for your stash. And it's also perfect for beginners. So if this is your first time doing any kind of stitching project, I highly recommend starting with something like this. Okay, I will talk to you guys later. Uh, I hope you have a great day. Bye.